Bonjour, my friends. I'm Frankie, and welcome to Club Foodie. I love warm weather, and my only consolation during the colder months of the year is to make comforting food, like this one. In today's episode, I'll show you how to make my baked ziti. Loaded with yumminess, this is an amazing dish you'll love to make this season. So let's get cooking. In a Dutch oven over medium-high heat, we'll add oil. And when it starts shimmering, we'll add onions. We'll saute them until translucent, about two and a half to three minutes. Next, we'll add pressed garlic and cook for only 30 seconds, stirring constantly. We don't want to burn it, otherwise it will turn bitter. To this, we'll add ground beef and hot Italian sausage. I have a homemade recipe, and to get it, click on the top right corner of your screen. We'll break the meat into small pieces and cook until no longer pink. That should take about five to six minutes. Halfway through, we'll season with ground sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. When the meat is cooked, We'll pour in some red wine, stir well, and cook until the liquid has reduced by half. We're still on medium high, so three to four minutes should do it. A few minutes later, when it gets there, we'll now add marinara sauce. You can use a jar or make my recipe by clicking on the link to get it. We'll also add passata, which is tomato puree that have been strained through a sieve. We'll rinse out the passata jar with half a cup of beef broth. That way, we're not wasting anything. We'll stir, reduce the heat to medium, and add some Italian seasoning. To make this blend from scratch, you know what to do. We'll mix it into the sauce and bring to a simmer. As soon as we see some bubbles on the surface, we know it's hot. And to prevent getting a tomato lava explosion, We'll reduce the heat to medium-low and simmer gently for 30 minutes, stirring often while cooking the pasta according to package directions. Also, during that time, we'll look after the ricotta cheese and add one beaten egg along with one tablespoon of chopped parsley. We'll stir until the ingredients are well blended and set aside for now. All right, so half an hour later, we want to taste and adjust the seasonings. It might need more salt or pepper, but don't go crazy with the salt because we'll be adding a lot of cheese later. If we're satisfied with it, we'll remove from the heat and add our cooked pasta. I'm using Z, but rigatoni or penny are another great choice and we'll gently stir until the noodles are nicely coated. We'll transfer half of the pasta to a five-quart baking dish that has been greased with cooking spray and level it out. We'll now spoon over half of the ricotta mixture, trying to spread it out as much as possible. Hey, it's not obvious and doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Next, We'll add three quarter cup of grated Fantina cheese, which in my opinion, the flavor is far superior than mozzarella. Followed by three quarter cup of Grana Padano cheese. See, I told you earlier that there will be a lot of cheese, so I hope you didn't add too much salt. Then we'll add the remaining pasta mixture and repeat the same steps adding the remaining ricotta cheese and spread it out, the remaining one and a quarter cups of fontina, and the same with grana padano cheese. Thank goodness I love cheese. <laughs> now we'll loosely cover the baking dish with aluminum foil and carefully transfer it to a 375 degree preheated oven. We'll bake for 20 minutes before removing the foil. To brown the top nicely, we'll turn the boiler on for 10 minutes. Most ovens have two settings. One is low and the other is high, so we'll put it on low broil, 
That way, we'll have better control and the top won't burn. When the cheese is nice and golden, we'll remove it from the heat. Boy, is it ever heavy! And let it sit for 10 minutes before sprinkling on the remaining one tablespoon of chopped parsley. Now we can enjoy it. <laughs> and my friends, this is our baked ziti. Super cheesy with a nice bold flavor, this pasta dish is comfort food to the max. It's a lovely castle recipe that you and your family will love. I hope you give it a try soon and be sure to visit clubfoodie.com for ingredient amounts, directions, and more info. Until next time, my friends, bon appétit!